I told you we'd be back, you guys. I told you we'd be back. Didn't I say we'd be back? I got this giant canvas. My arm is already tired. I put Ben Gay on it, so now it's like cold. Doing the doing the cold bit. Maybe I'll have to do it with this other arm. I'm not good with my left hand though. It's never been good. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And we're gonna try to get this big old giant canvas wet. You can see we've already gotten it wet with the reflection right there. Super wet with our Bob Ross liquid clear. Now, I did this in the last stream and we're gonna do it again in this stream. No matter if you like my talking or if you hate my talking, right? The more taps we have, every 10,000, I'm gonna stop talking or start talking again. So, for this first 10,000, we'll do the speaking. And I'm gonna show you what colors we're gonna go through and all that stuff before we get to 10K and I have to stop talking. So, we have our Cad Yellow, Bright Red, Yellow Ochre, Dark Sienna, Van Dyke Brown, uh, Sap Green, Thalo Green, Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White in the Bob Ross set. Then we're gonna be using the Meaden set as well. And we're gonna use the Crimson from the Meaden set, the Lamp Black, and that's probably it from that set. So, we'll eventually have to get that out. Let's see how many taps we're up to already. Okay, we're good, we're good, I don't have to rush. No rushing, so we're gonna take this bit right here, our Bob Ross liquid clear, and you have to cover the dark section in the clear so it becomes wet and nasty-like, right? And the more nasty and wet and slick it is, the more you're gonna have to wipe off, so don't do too much. <clears throat> Get a nice thin coat, a little thin layer of the clear, take a paper towel, wipe off the excess. Otherwise, it could drip on you. It could have too much, and over the night, in the middle of the night, it could start to drip and drag down color throughout other. It's bad. It's bad. It's happened to me many times. You forget to do it trying to prep and do all that stuff for you guys, and so we forget to uh, put the clear on and then wipe it off. That's a big part of the thing. Now, our white part of our canvas has to be just as wet and clean. See how still you get that reflection? It's still wet. Even though we just wiped it, it's still wet. So now we have to come way back here and take our Bob Ross liquid white and put that in the white part of our canvas, right? So I'm gonna shake it up. And what basically gets stuck to the top of the lid is pretty much all you're gonna need to do the white section. You don't need too much more than that. And for whatever reason, I've got a slippery brush handle, which is irritating me. So I'm gonna wipe the sucker off and then we're gonna clean it. There we go, all right. now. You gotta have clean, dry brushes in order to do the wet on wet technique. And we don't clean them all the time, right? It's not after every single color we even clean them. I'm a lazy, lazy old painter, so I don't clean the brushes very often. I like to show you, you don't have to either. You don't have to clean them after every time when you paint with Josh. So we're gonna dry that brush off, and then we're gonna switch brushes to a new brush that hasn't been used yet today. Let's see where we're at on the taps. See where we're at on the taps. Every 10,000 likes, I'm going to quit talking. Just paint. That's it. No teaching, no nothing. So, if you don't like my voice, tap the screen, and once we get to 10,000, I'll stop. And then once we get to 20,000, I'll start again. And then once we get to 30,000, I'll stop again. And so on and so forth. I think we got to like 170,000 taps just uh, at, from 8 o'clock to 8.30. It wasn't even a very long stream. So... If you don't like how I sound, that's fine. It's not gonna hurt my feelings. Tap the screen, and when we get to 10,000, I'll shut up, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, but before we get there, let me tell you, you can buy this painting. It's available for sale right now at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. It's over there, and you can get it, and it's gonna be really cool. It's gonna have this very, 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 kind of spooky green sky. We're gonna do a pyramid scene with the three pyramids of Giza. And then a lot of like, almost like waves, you know, we do our waves and stuff, but they're gonna be sand. It's gonna be really cool. So all we're doing now is getting the canvas wet. And I didn't, I would like to show this on camera sometimes because we get a lot of questions going, is the canvas wet? Is it dry? How did you do this? Is, you know, do you wait in between putting the clouds on or doing this or doing that? So I like to show you guys every so often how to do it. And it's literally just a lot of back and forth mixing it until you get it nice and uniformly wet across the whole surface, right? So I know we had some over here, we'll go like this, and we'll go like that. And just as you look down the side of it, you can see where it's wet and where it's dry. Go back in, make it all uniformly wet. 
And you don't need a whole lot of paint. You don't want to put too much on. And if you do, to put, uh, do put too much on, go and wipe it like we did with the clear. Go and wipe it off because you don't want to have too much. Don't want to have it all goopy up there. It's got to be very soft, very thin. And then once the whole canvas is wet, then we can get going. This wobbly old canvas. There we go. All right. Now, I'm trying not to get anything down in here, not on white color at least, down, see that, like that? Don't do that, Josh, a little bit, but you can see that we are actually putting color onto the canvas, it's just white. Now, let's come through here, we'll take out any brush strokes back and forth, just making it nice and smooth, and then all of a sudden we have two wet surfaces that we're ready to paint on. So let's clean the brush off, we'll put the liquid white stuff away, because we probably won't need it for this painting anymore. All right, we're going to do a desert pyramids of Giza painting with some wicked clouds. I'm talking about wicked clouds. So, I've done this painting once before. Actually, yeah, once, yeah, once before. I've done the clouds twice before, but I've done the, uh, the painting once before. So, we'll see <clears throat> what it turns out to look like. And maybe, guys, maybe, I mean, I'll, I'll probably get paint all over my iPad. Look at how vain of me. Don't, don't laugh, okay? There's a reason why this picture is here. It's the, uh, it's the most this kind of a picture from that, that whole photo shoot, which is why it's funny. It makes me laugh every time I open it. So shut up. Don't look at my screen. Don't look at my screen. Hang on. That's rude. Don't look at people's screens, okay? Hang on. Where are we at? Right here. This is what I want to show you guys. That's what we're going to be trying to recreate today. So maybe, just maybe, oh, get this sucker up underneath here like that. Oh, how does that look? Does that work? Does that work on screen? Eh, that works. It works well enough. That's sort of what we're going to do, just on a much bigger, bigger, bigger size. So, and it's going to be like green on the outside. At least we can put it there. It'll probably end up getting paint all over it, but it is what it is. Where's my need and paint? They're over here. And got my crimson. That sucker out and ready because it's such a cool color, this crimson. It's like a purpley magenta color, sort of. All right, now let's get to painting, guys. So we've taken our brushes, we've cleaned them all off. Let's get into our blue and our green and then some of our black from our Meaden set. I just dropped a whole bunch of skin right there. It's going to be one of those nights already. Okay, that's fine. At least I know how it's going to start. At least it didn't land on my Jordans, right? That would have really irritated me. So just like this, going to mix up a bit of our blue and I'll show you as we pull in from the side, look at that. You start to crisscross, you build your whole sky and it starts to easily drag. The more you pull it, the longer it'll drag across, right? All depends on our pressure. So we're going to come out here, we're going to do the sides real quick. Bam, 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 bam. Get those guys all sort of bluey through the top. Because I always say, I mean, especially on these big thick canvases, you got to finish the sides, guys. you got to finish the edges on the big thick canvas, right? So take in here, watch this. Now we're going to come into our blue a little bit. And then ka right into the phthalo green. Oh, look at this sky, you guys. That's going to be cool. It's like a very sea-colored green that uh, ends up being like a very spooky color. The more dark that you make it, the darker and darker and more spooky it becomes. So, a little bit of that. We can even throw a little of the sap green in the sky. Watch this. Just a touch. All right, it's going to be different. So don't pull it everywhere, but just a little bit. Maybe we take a little bit over here, too. We got little difference as we start to mix the colors, and then as we blend them all together, it's going to look really, really cool. Now, let's come in a little bit more of our blue, maybe a touch of our Bob Ross black, so it's not pure black down here. Oh, yes. See how we haven't washed the brush? And it's really starting to blend in and become all those different colors right in there. Oh, fantastic, right? Leave it a little darker over here, a little lighter over here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Literally doesn't. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the, the Meaden set because this black, right, actually stays black. It's called lamp. Oh, shoot. Have we got to 10,000 yet? Oh, man, we already wait. We blasted past it. I'm sorry, guys. So uh, when we get to 30,000, then I'll stop talking. I was doing this last stream. Every 10,000 likes, I'll shut up for 10,000 likes, and then we'll keep talking for 10,000 likes. So if we get to 30,000, then I'll be quiet. But for right now, let's go into that lamp black. And the lamp black from the Meaden set is a much more wet paint. See, that's much, much wetter in there, much more watery. 
much more wetter looking than our Bob Ross paints, which are super thick, right? So, which means it's gonna last, or it's gonna stretch a lot further. So we need a lot less of it. Put some up there, put some over here. Watch how it darkens our sky down. Right, the more and more that we put on there, look at how dark it is up here where we very first put it on. And then we blend it out. That's the best part about these oil paints. They stay wet for a long, long, long time. Now let's go over here. Let's see what we can do. Maybe you guys are getting close to 30, th Shh. Oh, shoot. Oh, we're at 40,000 already. We can speak again. Thank you guys for your tappers. I know some of you guys don't like my voice, and so you want me to shut up. And then some of you guys that tap, so it's like a battle between the tappers. So we're going to come in here to our lightest area, and we're going to start to crisscross, right? Dragging some of the white out, some of the color in. Back and forth, back and forth. Don't want it to get too crazy. You don't want it to have too much color inside our white area if you want your clouds to remain nice and bright. Now, who in the room has been doing their clouds and you go to do your clouds and they start to mix in with all your sky colors and all of a sudden they, you don't have white clouds anymore, right? Well, it's because you didn't leave enough white area. You don't want to cover everything and then go on top with the white. It's going to be harder and harder to do. Holy crap, you guys got, someone's got to tell me when we get past 60. Now I'm going to go to 65. <laughs> all right, so all we're doing is blending with our pressure, right? You saw me push real hard on it, like, Arr! So we can push hard, we can push lightly, we can blend this color down. We can pull the darkness all the way in and start to add a little bit of color into the middle, but keeping it lighter. See, that's that lighter color. Now out here, let's get rid of all these little streaks. Sometimes the streaks look cool. And sometimes they don't. So let's see where we are now. We had 70,000? Almost. Oh, goodness. So before we get to 70,000, everybody make sure to go to uh, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. If you want to buy this gigantic painting, it's $350 on the dot. Free worldwide shipping anywhere. Hey, we're back. Okay, so anytime you have this light area, right, and you go across it, your clouds aren't going to mix as much. So let's save a little bit of this space in here. So we can plop it in lots of white paint onto the brush. 
lots of light. Right? Start to throw in these clouds out there, and then they're going to start to come up here. All these little things, we start to blend them out, right? That's all we're going to do. A little bit of pushing on it out there. Now you can take your two inch brush or your one inch brush, whatever you want to do, whatever's easier for you, right? Some of the times it's easier on a bigger canvas to use the two inch brush. So it's the Bob Ross two inch landscape background uh, brush or the one inch landscape brush. And all we're doing is taking it with the corner of the brush and blending it down back towards that lighter color. So you can see you want them to mix in a little bit. Right? You want to have that little bit of color, but your clouds will remain nice and white out there because there's not a lot of color underneath it, right? All right, 4,000 likes, guys, before we can, we have to shut up again. Yeah, it's getting hot in here. Oh, by the way, uh, while we can still speak, just real quickly, uh, we're giving away, we're doing a hat giveaway on Friday. So I do my shows Monday and Friday on Facebook and YouTube and TikTok. Every other show is just on TikTok. So we're giving away a hat. Do you want to know how to win it for free? Well, if you buy this painting, you get five entries to win the hat. But if you want to know how to win it for free, I'm going to have to tell you about it a little bit later on because Just a couple more, guys. So, now that we're at 100K, let me tell you how to win that hat for free, okay? All you gotta do is go over to my Facebook page, and the very first pinned post at my Facebook page is the hat giveaway, the merchandise post. Now, if you wanna win it for free, all you gotta do is share that post to your page, to some art group, wherever. Share it, screenshot it as proof that you shared it. Go back and post your screenshot into the comments of my Facebook post out there. And then you'll be entered to win a free hat. No purchase necessary. All you gotta do is watch on Friday, see if your name gets drawn, right? Super easy, guys, super easy. Now, let's come back in with a bit more of our white on the brush. And now that we have this hole in the sky, right, we can sort of start to shape it. Like you can put a few little bits back in here, right? You wanna cover it a little bit. You bring it down like that. Nothing too crazy, but show a little bit of the clouds in front versus that dark, stormy bit back there, right? So very lightly as we start to mix over, it's gonna to wanna to mix in with that thing, it's gonna to wanna to mix in with the colors underneath it as we start to blend back and forth. Now we're gonna build on top of this guy. Yes, yes, right? As we build on top of him, we're gonna look sort of similar to what we got down here. Let's see, are we, have we got to 110 yet? Close, we got 5,000 left. So remember, if you wanna get this painting, Go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and you can get it. I'm going to put a little bit of our phthalo green up in here, a little darker. Just so we have a bit darker stripe above, right? This a little separator. So you can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com if you want to get this painting before it's even done. It's up there. It's available to, to buy right now. You can get it. If you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and search for number 908, this is number 908 for me on the career, number two for tonight. So get over there, paintwithjosh.etsy.com, get this one, and we're probably up to 110 by now, I would imagine. Ooh, we're getting close, we're getting close. Everybody wants me to shut up. Shut up, Josh. We'll come over here, I'm gonna mix a little bit of our black in so it's not a pure white, a little bit of a gray, just like that. And come across a big old swipe. There's no paint on that side, there we go. Need a little bit more, apparently. Across the top, guys. Boom, let that sucker mix down. That'll be cool.
Hey, we're at 20,000. Perfect. 120,000. Excuse me. Excuse me, Josh. 120,000. Bang. A couple little bits just to accentuate the happiness of that cloud out there. It's gorgeous. A little bit in here, a little softness. Oh, yeah. All right, you want that deep, dark little bit in there. And then the more that you mix the edges where you don't want it, the more it'll disappear, right? What do you want yours to look like? You want it to look like that? Up to you. Up to you. It might be a bit brighter up here. Just wanted to mix in with all the paints, which is what happens. All right? And then we blend and blend and blend until we don't like it or we like it. Very softly, a couple little swipes. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Needs to be a bit brighter though. A bit brighter though. It just means more paint on the brush, less pressure. All right, there we go. I like that. All right, now, in any case, it's not even the focal point of the whole painting, this whole little bit that we got going on in here, because we got this whole section up here we got to do as well. A little bit of excess out there. And we're gonna slide it down. It all blends into this one giant, like cone-shaped sort of a thing. So let's throw a bit more on the outside. And we come out here, right, come down like that. Maybe out here, <laughs> throw it out there. However, which way you want. And there's no. Oh shoot, have we? Oh no, we're still good. There's no uh, perfect shape for a cloud. Nothing, right? Mix it up. Have that light against the dark really sort of extends everything outward like that. It's very cool. Very cool. Now, what I want to do is wash our brush off nice and clean, and then maybe we'll go back and add just a far off little, little something or other way out in the distance. So I'm going to get a little of our uh, Bob Ross Midnight Black with the Titanium White. And where are we at for likes? 125. We're still good. We're still good. Now, maybe out here that little soft little bit of an indication, maybe, maybe out there in the distance, there's a little UFO coming in, just maybe, all right, popping in a little color, all they got to do, and then you got to push it, right, is it a cloud, is it a far away UFO, is it blending in with the sky, is it a shadow, is it a shape, what is it out there, what's going on, totally up to the viewer, right, not up to me, it's not up to you either. It's up to whoever's looking at it when we post the photos. Little light over the dark, right? You get that little bottom to it. A little shadowy bit. Very cool. I wanted to add a little, is it a UFO, is it not in this painting versus the other painting because I just love them so much. I don't know why. They're super easy to paint. And then you get to decide what, oh shoot, are we past the, oh no, we're still good. We're still good. That's pretty cool, you guys. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm come in here, a little bit darker on our color, just to kind of separate those things back in there. And we'll see. Oh yeah, there we go. That's adding some depth into it right there. And we had a bit of these guys start to, these little shadowy bits, like start to, like it's a tunnel up here or something. Same little thing though. All depends on what you want it to look like, and then you gotta work at it, and you gotta work at it, and you gotta work at it. All right, say we added some darkness back in here, a right? little bit, and then we can add our clouds over the top. A little bit of shadowing in there. That's very cool as it is. Very cool as it sits right now. And it's all about a, a work in progress, right? You, you start to look at it and see what do you think is gonna look cool if we did this or that this or that, and then you go in there and you add some color and then you try to blend it out all softly and then you look at it and you go, okay, that looks kind of cool. All right, I dig it, I dig it, that looks neat, that looks neat. All right, and then you come in. All depends on what you want to do with your little bit. As you come in and you wrap these guys around, it makes it look like a little vortex, a little circle back there. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, I like that. can't wait for this uh, supposed hurricane to come hit Las Vegas. Never in my life had I thought 
there'd be a uh, a hurricane in Vegas. Never, never, never. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stretch this guy out a little bit. There we go. Let's see if we can't do something, something with him. Just change him up a touch. It's kind of irritating me that little circle. All right, we are back. Back in here. It's gonna be super dark. All right, it's gonna have that little angle shape to it. Cross on the front like that. And around the back. Bang, bang, boom. Do we have to? Oh, perfect. Hundred and forty thousand taps. You guys are nailing it out there. Now, what three colors does Paint with Josh normally like to use when we do this sort of a mountain kind of shapey or a mountain shadowy color? We use these three colors on the palette. And in this, in this instance, I'm going to add a little bit of my brown as well, just to make it a little darker like that, a little change it up, right? But what three colors do we normally use in order to make a very deep, dark, shadowy mix of a color? You guys got to tell me in the comments right now. Tell me now. And then tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And remember, if you want to buy this painting, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, and it can be yours. Crimson, blue, and black. Right there. Boop, blep, derp. That's a hard, uh, that's a hard name to say. That's a hard name to say. Let's see. Pin this comment. There we go. Right there, guys. Everybody knows. Remember... Every 10,000 likes, we stop talking and we just paint. So if you like my voice, keep tapping because everyone who hates my voice is tapping against you. And eventually they're going to hit a spot and I need your backup. So as we mix up that bit of color, why don't we come in here and now, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do these far off little bits. Let's put the first guy over here. And we need to really work on the angle. So don't make them too wide initially, right? And then... You have to mess around with it just like that and then we can change it we can shape it we can extend it we can cover in all of the color in behind it just like that pull it down pull it down pull it down pull it down and it all depends on how we're going to uh highlight it and stuff with our brown and different different highlights and shadows so a little bit of our far away little pyramid off in the distance cute little guy way out here. Bam, 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 bam. Bringing him down into the desert sands below. All right, then we get to decide where the light is based on where his uh, shadowing is and all that stuff. So let's see. I could show you just right here. We can even take this one side and go like this. Cover that in in a darker kind of shadowy color. And then you have your tri-sided pyramid right there. Now, let's come back in. Let's get a little bit more of our paint and we're gonna come back, grab this guy down here. Have we reached our limit yet? No, not yet. Good, 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 good. Now, as we come in, that little guy, over there, over there, over there, over there, over there. There we go, I like that better. Now, let's come in with our next bigger one, right? Our Great Pyramid of Giza as he comes up in here. He's a much taller pyramid. 
bring it down through there. All right, let's adjust our angles. Bring it down. Man, you just sit and play with it from there, right? Just like that. Take it, pull it out with our brush by the time we get done. And you'll never know the difference. There we go. Fill it all in. Normally when I'm, pay when I'm painting, I'm telling you guys not to make your mountains look like pyramids. Well, in this instance, we want them to look like pyramids. We want it to be perfect along the edge. We want it to be a very pyramidal shape because we're painting pyramids. How about that? How about that? And then you can go and adjust him too. So don't worry if it's a little bit too, you know, pointy, you can straighten him out. You can adjust it as you go. Don't trip. Don't trip, a little softness. All right, once we get down into the sand, you do whatever you want. But as we come down into here, I'm gonna get this whole thing, and then maybe less pressure on this guy on our side to keep him a little bit darker, you know what I mean? And then we can go back and highlight everything anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't very much matter. There we go. Very cool. Very cool. Almost like it's getting sucked up into that, uh, <laughs> that little hole up there. Something's going to pop out. Something's going to pop out up there, you guys. Uh, let's extend this guy out a little bit. Just do them like a mountain. Pull them off in different directions. There we go. That ain't bad. That ain't bad if you ask me. Always can adjust it though. We got to 150 already. My goodness, I don't even get a breath in me anymore. I don't even get a breath from any, anything anymore. There we go. Very cool. Now, we're going to decide by the time that we start to shape it how far away they go back on our horizon. We could even raise our whole horizon if we wanted to and push them back even further. So, let's not get too crazy. And let's come in with our third little guy. He's a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller over here. And then we can always change it, remember. So, don't worry about it, Josh. There we go. Let's come in like this. Let's go up a little bit higher, actually. All you gotta do, guys, come in, you have to cut in front of the other one, though. They're all stacked, so this little guy is in the front of the bigger guy. Just like that. Scraping up a bit, chucking in some color. I grabbed a bit of brown in there, too. Bing, bang, boom. And all you gotta do is smoosh it on, because all we're really doing it's just worried about the shape, you know what I mean? We don't care what the what the bottom looks like, what the inside looks like. We're just mushing on for that outside line out here and what its angle is, what it looks like out there. All right, there we go. Very cool. Should be very simple to do now. Simple enough anyway, right? We take these guys very lightly. Again, this one's gonna be, gonna be all sorts of stuff. We get to decide where they sit so don't worry, we're going to come in here, pull it down, pull it down, very lightly though, because there's a lot of paint up there. You want it to be nice and thick so it'll grab onto our highlights and stuff. Just like that. Very cool. Now, we need to extend this little guy out this way. All right, just to change his angle. That looks a little better. That looks a little bit better. Right. Each time you go back, you can fix it, you can mush it, you can change it, you can do whatever you want to do. What 
whatever you want to do. And then we're going to blend them all out, and then we're going to cover it anyway, so don't worry about it. There we go. That's much better. Much better of a shape on that guy. The best part about these oils, though, is you can mush them and shoot them off in every direction, literally doing whatever we want to do whenever we want to do it. You know what I mean? It's very cool. Going back, fixing different things, all sorts of stuff you can do. Now, remember, there's no paint underneath the canvas, so you better make sure that you don't have just some pure white on your brush. That would not be good uh, in this instance. Now, Let's go back. We're going to take and we're going to clean off all the brushes. So what? Uh, how many taps are we at? 152K. Let's see. So of course, I offer lessons uh, inside my gallery at uh, City of the World Art Gallery inside of Meadows Mall in Las Vegas. So if you're a Las Vegas local, you can come down and take an in-person class. Or if you want to travel into town and uh, book an in-person class, we can do it down there at the gallery. Or I could teach via... A virtual class like this where I have my phone set up you have your phone set up and then we go back and forth you know I see I look and see what your thing looks like you watch me do this I watch you do it and blah blah blah, blah. so a little bit more difficult as a as a, a virtual class but we get it done nonetheless and you can find the classes over in my Etsy store which is paintwithjosh.etsy.com my next class is actually a uh, it's a sunset waves workshop and we're going to be doing that on the 16th of uh, september so that'll be cool over there finish washing these guys off what, I, what my plan was was to do some really cool like sandy looking waves it's like they're going to look like the waves that we do on the ocean but in sand it's going to be kind of cool that's the thought anyway we'll see what it looks like We'll see. We'll see. Now, let's get a little bit of our two brown colors on our brush, and then we're going to come in and start to deposit in this little bit of brown undercolor, right? Gonna stretch it, gonna push it, gonna let it mix in, gonna change, gonna do all this stuff, right, as we get out here. And then we're gonna shape it with our waves and go over it and do all that. But it all depends on how much color you have in a certain spot, right? You can really push that guy all the way across, right? Up to you what you do with it. But we can do lots of stuff in here. And again, I want to leave a nice little area of darkness sort of as far away from our corner of our painting, I guess you could call it. Out there like that. So it gets darker and darker and darker and darker as it goes over here. Now, the only way it's doing that is I didn't put any more paint on the brush. I just worked it from one side to the other. And it darkened in naturally. Very cool. And we can come back in here. We can make these guys look like they're... Like there's some little smoky mist at the bottom of them. We can do whatever we want. You can make it look just literally legit. You can do, you can spend 10 hours on it, put in a bunch of details. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, there we go. Very cool. Just remember, it's got to go that, that, and then this. It's got to be a little bit lower than our bigger one back there. Just like that, guys. Very cool. All right, now let's put in something. Let's do some sort of something over here, Josh. What are we going to have them look like with all these little... We do like... I almost want to do like an ocean scene just because it would be different. You know what I mean? We could have an, an ocean of sand crashing against the pyramids. I don't think anyone's ever done that. I don't think anyone's ever done that, guys. So... Dude, we should have saved the wild, whatever. We can do it another time. Okay, let's go. That's going to be the idea, though, right? It's going to be like a surrealism sort of sandy ocean thing, which we need a little bit of our thing. And then I'll get to paint a big crashing wave in the middle of the desert. Like, <laughs> Okay, so we're going to come back here. Let's, let's just pretend and do that, right? We're going to come back, and we're going to pretend that we're going to paint a seascape into this little bit of our our deserty thing but the seascape is going to be sand right instead of water obviously so we'll see what it looks like by the time we get done and if it sells it sells and if not i'll take it to the gallery and if it doesn't you know then maybe uh i'll trash it i'll paint over it i'll do whatever it's all practice right all the time what's that through the third p of paint with josh guys practice that's right now this is going to be kind of cool actually so i can see it in my mind already so I'm going to do it the same way that we do our waves 
on uh, if we're going to do an ocean, right? I'm going to do it the same exact way, but we're just going to do it with this sandy brown sort of undertone. Now, you can see we've left these differences. So you got darker colored, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, lighter, darker, lighter, lighter, right? All these differences in there. Don't trip. This is going to be cool. All right, let's come in here and let's go down, a little up, a little down, right? Make our first little ocean -y of sand thing. Maybe it'll look like crap and maybe it'll be cool. I don't know. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out. There we go. A couple little bits of difference back there, right? Doesn't have to be crazy. A little different. Come in here. Just like that. A little bit of sandy, watery, sandy waves. You're going to be like, is that water or is it sand? Like, I can't figure it out, bro. Pretty cool no matter what. And it'll be unique. You know what I mean? That's what's cool about it. Now, let's come in with our next little bit, and, uh, and then we can always go back and, and highlight the, um, the pyramids and stuff afterwards. But now I got this idea, I have to see it through to, to fruition. Come in like that, our next little guy. Right back in there. So this guy would have a couple little bits sliding back, just like we would do with a wave out there in the, in the sand. It'd be very cool. It's, it's definitely definitely not a realism type of thing for sure, right? So, let's have fun with it. What are we gonna do? We'll figure it out. We could lit I was talking earlier about, uh, oh, that looks kind of neat right there. Dude, I never saw that before. What if we add a little touch underneath here? And then we just brighten it up just a little bit, like a little eye, just a little teeny tiny bit, right? Now our next thing is gonna come in here. So why don't we go like this? Start sliding through, we cut it back. All right, save that bit of darkness back there. And then we'll have our ocean, our big old sandy, watery, crashing wave come up like this. And I don't care if you guys like it or not, I like it. I think it's a cool idea. And I mean, sue me for loving to paint seascapes no matter where we paint. And this wasn't the idea initially. I didn't, I, I didn't plan on doing this. Just like that. And I don't even know what we're at as far as likes wise. Um, oh, maybe I should be quiet for a little bit. Just be yourself, please. Uh, it's funny. How am I not being myself? I'm always being myself. Always being myself. So what we've been doing, though, in order to encourage the tapping on the screen is every 10,000 taps, I stop talking for 10,000 taps, and then we start talking again. So like I was saying before, I don't care if you guys like this one or not. I think it's a really cool idea. And... Uh, I'm going to continue to do it. I'm, I'm debating, though, whether about to put the eye of the wave in the sand, right? Like, I mean, it is, it's a surrealism wave. So, I mean, man, we, we should put the eye in. I don't know. You guys tell me, would you want the eye of the wave in the sandy waves? <laughs> That's a cool thing. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. We're used to you talking. I know. I know you guys are. That's what's cool, right? So, for 10,000 taps on the screen, I talk. Yeah, looks like sand dunes. Yeah, I think, I see, the, somebody says no eye, somebody says yes to the eye. I think if we're going to paint a, an, you know, a, an impressionistic ocean scene, you would want the eye of the wave, right? It's, obviously this isn't the real sand, so let's, let's try it. Let's see. Just a little bit. And remember, what do we stick in between the eye and the next little piece? 
What do we call that thing in there? What's that last, that little, that little, that little side? If I say it, I'm just gonna give it away, right? Very cool. What's that last little piece in there, guys? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Dark separator, Anna says. Let's see if we can pin that. Everybody go follow Anna. She knows. This is a cool little thing. Now, let's come in here. We're gonna take our brush and we're gonna go like this. We're just gonna start to flip it off to the side. And rotate down and rotate down and rotate down. Filling it in like that, right? As it falls over, then we're gonna turn our brush, start back here, and we're gonna start to whip it up. But we're gonna come back to the same little pivot point as we like to call it, right over there. All right, then we take the front, we push it back in front of all these waves in the back. There we go, you guys, very cool. It's like a little heart-shaped thing. I love this, I love it. Now, maybe we should try to highlight these pyramids before we get too far away. Dark separator, you guys are right. And you were right about the, uh, about the um, eye of the wave, I like it there. Okay, now let's just say, Say if we had our pivot point over there, right? And we came back and it was going over. Or maybe we need to move it. Maybe we should have it here. And going out like that. Just by changing the direction of the poles. Right? We go out straight, come over here. All returning back to that one little spot up there, right? And that way we can make our little wave as it comes crashing down. Maybe this guy comes over here. And it's all like that. And then these guys are going off the other direction, making our little mustache shapes. All right, changing, pulling it over here, doing whatever we want to do. That's a very cool little thing. I got tons of people in the Etsy store, apparently. And, uh, yeah, a little sandstorm. That's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. So, all depends on what it looks like when we get done with it, right? I'm literally, all I did was put the two browns underneath, and then we're just painting with white and seeing what it looks like as it starts to mix in and come alive with itself. A little bit more white. And remember, every 10,000 taps, I will either shut up or keep talking. So if you don't like the sound of my voice, keep tapping that screen. And if you do like the sound of my voice, keep tapping that screen because there's tons of people that don't. And they're tapping it, so I'll shut up. So I'll need you as my, uh, as my, my cheerleading team to be like, no, come on, Josh, keep talking. you got to battle against them for me. Okay? There we go. Very cool. Have it come crashing down. So... Let's decide if we wanted to sort of make up a little bit. Oh, guys, by the way, I'm going to be on the news tomorrow in like, I don't know, 10 hours. I'm going to be on the news in 10 hours. Oh, that's a very cool thing to say. I'm going to be on the news in 10 hours. Thank you very much. What if we took a little bit of brightness? Let's pull it down on this guy. All right, and we've got to use the, the knife coming down in different directions to help make it look like it's, that, that's perfect, right? We don't have to shade the back side. It's in the shadow already. We don't have to do that. Now this side, we can come up here. And again, all we're doing is pulling it down like a mountain. And then we're gonna leave it like that. Like it doesn't have to be the two million bricks that make up the Great Pyramid. You don't have to paint every one. Trust me, I'm telling you right now. Especially if we're doing like an impressionistic seascape sand dune weird thing nothing has to be anything <laughs> i'll tell you that right now they'd be like uh no one can come at you and go uh that's not supposed to be like that they'd be like oh really how is it supposed have you seen it how is it supposed to be please tell us how is it supposed to be Get down there remember we're leaving little areas in the light little areas in the dark and then we're going to come back and blend it out so it's nice and soft just getting some color on there gotta have your Angles right, right? And have that dark side be in the dark. Just like that, very cool. Very cool. Now we'll take this guy over here. Slide him down, slide him down. From that little pivot point, same thing from the top, right? We're using the top of the pyramid as its little pivot point. We come down like this. Very cool. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? That was never, never, ever have to be perfect. I like that. A couple little shadowy sides, a couple little dark uh, light sides. Very cool. Now what we're going to do is take those guys and make them even harder to see by just very lightly going over them. Same thing, using that top edge as a pivot point and then coming down. Right? Very cool. It just softens the paint. It softens it. doesn't do much. Right? We're not trying to, to get rid of all the details. Just trying to have it go soft. 
Not something that you want when you're with the ladies, but something that you want when you're with the paint. Gotta have it go soft. Now the kids don't know what we're talking about, but we do. We do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come over here. We'll fix our wave a little bit. There we go. Sliding it off. Yes, baby. Now, let's come in here and start to play around. Now, what if we had our bit, came down, started to come back this way, and started to slide back and slide back and slide back. And eventually, it's going to end up with its own little sandy, duny little bit over here that was coming down. Right? Maybe we had a little bit off that side, too. What are we at for as far as likes? Oh, good. We're not up to 170 yet. I can still continue to speak. Thank you all. I'm going to leave that little dark separator. I'm going to start to pull it down, slide it out. Right? Just like this. All depends on our brush strokes, though. Very cool. Very cool. I like it. Now that we've got some of that color on the brush, we can come in here and we can start making our little rounded shapes. But you got to remember, there's a little circle right in here that you can't touch. you got to leave it. Don't touch that sucker. As we come out here, you can push harder and harder and harder, depositing more paint off the brush, filling in our little spot back there. That's kind of cool. And this thing's got waves, pyramids, and a UFO in it with some crazy, trippy, like, tunnel of a cloud and a contrail. What else do you want in this painting? I mean, for goodness sake. There we go. Come back over here. Slide this guy out. This is such a cool painting, too. I'm going to love this sucker so much. I might have to go pull it out of the store before you guys can, uh, can buy it. As soon as this show is over, actually, I'm whipping it out of the store so you can no longer have it. It is too pretty. Plus... We have to go back, that big, the, our, our large pyramid, right, the Great Pyramid, has a brighter sort of capstone on top where the limestone, did you guys know that the Great Pyramid was covered in the most gorgeous bright white limestone, and then it had like this golden top that's just shone in the day uh, sun, and then over time all the limestone has come off, and so, except for the very top, and so the very top is a much brighter bit, it's got like this section where it's still got that brighter color to it. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit down like that, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're gonna go back underneath it and add a little dark separator underneath there, right? So we'll grab a little of our dark color, come underneath, a little bit, little dark lines, like wherever you're gonna put it, right? A little bit, and that'll cause its own little self, if we slide it down just enough, to have a little lip. Just a little lip on there is all we need. And that separator right there, perfect. All it does is separate our paint, and that way you can tell the difference. Ooh, let's get a little bit of that brown back in here. I like that a bit better. It makes it a bit darker. And our two brown colors come down. I know we really got to shape our line. There we go. Darker, shadowy in there, right? And then let's come back and pull it out. There we go. Just have that little separation, that dark. See, even on the corner of our of our thing, right? You've got to have that little dark separator, which separates the front of the pyramid from the side of the pyramid. You know what I mean? This guy. Just like that. Very cool. We're all using the same colors. You gotta be smart about it. I think we'll have a little fog come in from back here just to soften this area. A little bit of mist, some kind of something happening back here. Very cool. Very cool, guys. A little flooded desert, if you ask me. Now, here's gonna be a little fun thing. What if we had a little bit of like a soft little thing of water? wave kind of pulling its way out there too. That'll be kind of cool. All right. First we have to stick it up a bit higher though. That's what I figured out. Let's come back here going almost all the way up to it. Keeping that little bit of shadowing underneath. Right? A little touch of shadow. A little bit. Shh. Right? Take this guy out here now. Oh, that's cool, guys. That's cool. Man, I 
like that one. That's pretty neat, dude. That's pretty neat, guys. All right, keeping our little dark separator. It's a little different than how we do our normal sand, right? Because it's not wet sand. It's kind of dry sand. What would it look like if we did our wet sandy technique, I wonder? My goodness. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, you guys said you're so not getting this painting. I'm taking it out. Actually, where's my phone? Let's take it out of the shop right now. You are not allowed this painting. It is beyond you. You will not appreciate it as much as I will. I am going to keep it. So if you want to get it, you better get it now because you've never seen one look like this before. Let me tell you that. Never, ever. And everyone's going to crap their pants when I post this. Literally going to crap their pants when we post this one. So let's come over here. And what you guys have just as long until I finish the show and before I rip this out the store. I'm, I'm not 100% legit AF. I'm taking it out. So if you want this painting, I don't care what you got to do, you better get it before the show's over because I'm taking it out the store. And remember, if you get it, you get five entries into the hat giveaway. Actually, I'll give you 10 entries into the hat giveaway for this guy. And then everybody else, if you want to get the hat for free, let me tell you how to do it just real fast before we finish up right here. Uh, go to my Facebook page. The very first post is the pin post, the giveaway post. Got all the merchandise and all the logo stuff, right? Share that post to your page, to your art, your favorite art group or whatever. Share it somewhere. Screenshot it as proof that you shared it. Go back and post it into the comments. And then I'll comment on it and say, you're entered. And uh, then you'll be entered in. And then on Friday, we're going to do a drawing. And it's going to be awesome. So you can win a free Paint with Josh hat. And remember, it doesn't have to be the yellow one. This is just my favorite design. It can be uh, black and purple, black and red, black and blue, black and silver, lots of different combinations. All white, all black, all red, all different kinds of combinations. All green. I got all of them coming, every single one in the mail coming to me right now. So we're going to have a lot of fun with giveaways and stuff coming up soon, right? Not necessarily tonight or, uh, you know, we're doing one on Friday. Hopefully the, the hat will be here by Friday, I'm hoping. We've already given away one of the free hats, so that is so cool. God, I'm, I'm doing so many more desert seascapes like this, I'm, and this is my original concept, so don't you dare try to steal it. You guys can copy it as much as you want, but you better give me credit for, uh, for coming up with it. Can show me, if, I, if it's not my original idea, show me. Somebody send me a picture of who, who else did this, and uh, I want to see it. I'm totally down. Because I don't look at anyone else's art. I don't do anything, right? And uh, I just kind of teach myself. I look and I go, okay, well, this would look neater if we did it like this next time or like that next time. Let's try doing this and let's try doing that. And uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And as far as uh, I'm concerned, this one worked for showsies. Let's get a little bit more of our brightness up here. It's going to glimmer in the morning sun. Here we go. Purdy, purdy, purdy. I like that. Now, let's come in with our three favorite dark colors. Now, who knows what our three favorite dark colors are? What are the three favorite dark colors? Oh, no, we got to 173. I need to shush.
All right, right on time. I was going to come up here and go. Like, how many? Uh, uh, doesn't make any sense, right? So, even though we've just smooshed on all this white and brown, I mixed the white and the brown together versus just the white on the white. White and the brown together. Even though we've just smushed all that stuff on there, right? What have we left in between all those little spaces? What have we left? What have we left? Oh my God, talk again. Well, we got to 180,000 taps. I like how everyone, the taps die off. <laughs> like we get to, we get to 180,000 and then it's no taps because no, everyone wants me to talk now. Okay, should we, should we kill the tap thing? I mean, we got to 180,000. You guys have been amazing. Amazing. You know, my, my, my like to beat is 1.1 million taps in a one hour show. A one hour show at 1.1 million taps. Now, let's come up here. We're going to start to just very lightly mix, and we leave all those little dark separators in there because you got to have some shadowing, right? You can't have it all be the same color. If we start to mix it all up, it's going to go into all the same bit of color. Now, remember, we do it two times. So, that's the first go. We'll come back, we'll get a little bit more of our liquid white, and then we'll come back and do it again. And then we're going to still throw paint at it like we would with a seascape. I'm going to still do the exact same thing. So let's see what it's going to look like by the time we get done. Remember, this is number 908, 908, I think. Do we just do 907, 6, 7, 8, 10? I don't know. 908, I'm pretty sure. So let's come back and do it again. we got our liquid white. And this time, just going to go into the white pile and not get it browned up, right? No Cleveland Brown on this one. We're going to come over here. Just with the white, we're going to come back and do the exact same thing. going to start to slap at the canvas like that. Right? <laughs> slap at it. <laughs> it's not my bum. It's my mouth, I swear. All you got to do, right? Now, we're going to go mix that again. Now, do we do more pressure or do we do less pressure on this mix? Right? We did less pressure than the clouds, right? I told you when we were doing the clouds, you kind of have to decide what pressure you use. And then on here, you use less pressure. Now, do we do less or do we do more on the second go round, the number two go? Let's see, Airy Fairy Face says less. Let's see, anybody else want to answer my questions? Less says Wanda G. Everybody's just tapping there. Oh, we can't type, my fingers fell off from tapping. Right, less, must says less, right? Because you want them to remain a bit brighter than the background color that we just did. So we go like this and we very lightly start chucking them around. Little things, little bits, very light touches, right? Because it's gonna wanna grow like crazy. Then you decide where it comes down and hits in your sand. Maybe it hit way back here. You start to straighten it out, pull it out like that, right? gonna go flying off into the mist. Maybe it hit way over here. You know, dust. Dust gets everywhere. That sucker can go as far as you want to take it. Right? Now we've sort of, because I made it a little bit longer, we sort of got rid of some of our details. So let's come back in here. We'll just pop in a few more little bits of white. Go over them again very lightly. Just so light. There we go. Little bits of dust flying through our scene. Right? But the more it mixes together, the more it's gonna become all the same thing. So don't let it mix all the way together. Perfect. Just like that. Come out of here. Right? Literally. Do whatever you want to do way out on the edge. Could be more sand. It could be more dust. It could be whatever. Whatever you want to have it. That's very cool. Man, that's one of my all-time favorites right here, let me tell you. Now, I'm going to come back. I'm going to add a little bit more of our dark separator and have it climb up higher and higher as it goes. Right? Just having it connect to our bit right there. And then we're going to come back and we're going to mush it and push it and stretch it and soften it and make it become further away and harder to see. Just like that. Make those little things way out there. Very cool. Now we're going to decide with our amount of pressure on our brush just how much light gets reaches all the way down here in the corner. Because it doesn't all have to be the same. It can get darker and darker and darker. That's very cool. I like that a lot. Now, let's come in with our last bit. We always wait to do, and maybe instead of little splashies of water, these will be little grains of sand or whatever they are. Whatever they are, they're going to be cool because it's a sandy, sandy ocean seascape out here in the middle of the, of the desert, right? Very neat. Now, I'm going to come in with the, uh, with the liquid white. I'm just going to start to spritz them off like that. 
Just a little bit. Maybe they're little bits of sand, they're little bits of water, <laughs> or not water, but uh, little bits of sand anyway, flying out, getting all over the place. All depends on what you want yours to look like, how far they go, every which where. Perfect. I like that. That's very neat. I don't care what you guys think. That's very cool. Very cool. Bang. Just like that. We need one more little spritz. Plop, 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 plop. Right there. Gorgeous, guys. Gorgeous. So, like I said, time's running out if you want to get this painting. Because, uh, boy, oh boy, do I like it. That's for sure. That is for sure. There we go. Not everything's got to be lit the same, remember. That's a better shape. Boom. And then again, you can work on yours as much as you want. Play around. Slide the color back and forth, slide it up, slide it back. Lots of little differences back in there. Very cool, though. Very cool little thing. Okay. I like it. There's so much brown in it. So much brown. Take it to brown town. So, guys, come up with a name for this one. This is what I'm really... I'm going to name it. Well, I'm going to pick a name because I don't think anybody's going to buy it, and I'm probably going to keep it. And so whatever person has the best name in the comments, that's what I'm going to pick. And that's what we're going to have. So... Don't fail me now. Come up with a good name. Your best shot. Give it your best shot. <laughs> Come up with a good name. What would you call this painting? And all my mod girls should be ravagely typing into the comment section. What would you call this painting right now as we start to name it? Josh is going to choose a title, and that's going to be it. No messing around, brah. I'm gonna pick a title, and that's gonna be the title. I have a bit of our brown. Yeah, it's the same color. We're gonna use a bit of the white. Just a little bit of the white as we come in here. Almost like it's starting to roll over. You know what I mean? Like water would. But this is sand. You guys know what I'm talking about. Maybe it's got a little like little dribbler as it comes down. All sorts of stuff we can happen on here. And then again, if you don't like it, watch this. Turn it into the eye of the wave. Just like that. Wicked cool. Pull these guys up. Boom, 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 boom. Get that dark separator nice and small, making it nice and soft. You don't want to come in and get all of our little bits of spray. Those are cool. I love this bit back here, too. Love that. Love that. Ah, oh, so dope. So dope. So dope. Get up there. There we go. Yes! He was, he was making me mad the whole time. The angle of that guy was just irritating me. Perfect! I'm not going to worry about it too much more. This guy, we need to change a bit. He needs to come out a bit, a bit more. Actually, his whole top needs to come up a bit more. Like that. That's a bit better. A difference in the angle, guys. Right? It's all that matters is that angle in it. Is that angle right? Because if that angle ain't right, everyone's gonna look at it like it's all wonky. So, which is one of my favorite British terms, wonky. Gonna be all wonky. There we go. Right, then we can go back and we can decide where our bit of our brown was again. Pop that guy in there. Again, there's really no detail in the in the pyramids besides a little bit of color and our little capstone up there. That's pretty much it. This is like a long forgotten, so many thousands of years in the future that humanity has long since disappeared and the pyramids are being swallowed up by the desert sands again. To be refound again in millions of years by 
future humans and blah, 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 blah. Very cool. Wash off all these brushes. You guys are going to hit me with those titles. What do you want to name this painting, guys? What are we going to name it? I can't wait to see the reaction for this painting. Like, if people are going to love it, if they're going to hate it. If I'll get, you know, 400 likes or if I'll get 1,200 likes. Like, it's different. You never know. You never know what's going to happen over there on Facebook. What the people are going to want to see. So... We shall see. Okay, let me turn this camera around and we'll see you guys and uh, what you got going on over here. So, bam, what's happening, folks? Oh, don't get me too close. You don't want to see me. Let's see if we can adjust. Dang, that looks cool. It's big, too. It's big, ladies. It's big. Reincar uh, no, reclamation. That's cool. I almost read it as something different. As reincarnation. Reclamation because they're... The Desert Sands are reclaiming the pyramids. Guys, that's a cool title. Cool title. Let's see. Alienated Desert Storm. Does nobody see my little UFO cloud in the distance either? You're not going to incorporate that. Illuminati. Oh, the abduction of Giza. That's a cool title. That's a cool title. Dystopian Desert. That's cool too. Clash of the Sands. Pharaoh Sands. Let's see. Pyramid 51. I'd call it like, I would call it like, you know, Giza Beach, <laughs> something like that. Deserted Waves, Death for Paradise, I dig it. Yes, yeah, we decided in this instance, we got about, we did the pyramids and we were doing our, our little sandy thing. And then I was like, you know what? I've never seen a seascape <laughs> in the middle of the Sahara with the, uh, with the pyramids. So let's do like a surreal type of thing and have it be like an ocean of sand. So that's what it sort of turned into. It kind of looked pretty cool. Ended up being cool, I think, anyway. So I'm going to, uh, so cool that I'm going to try to pull it out of my own store before any of you guys can have it. And then uh, I can keep it here at home. Deserted Oasis. If it gets a cool enough name. If. If it gets a cool enough name. Let's see the black hole of Giza. It is cool, isn't it? It's neat. It's big, too. It's freaking massive. 24 by 36, so two feet by three feet. And uh, it took us an hour and 15 minutes. People go, oh, how long did it take you to do that? I'm like an hour, and they're like, no, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, it did, it's on video. It's an hour. Ooh, stab myself. Ocean of Sands, I like Pharaoh Sands, but we gotta come up with something. Like if it's gonna be the Pharaoh, I'm super into Egyptology and UFOs and all that stuff. So if we're gonna go Pharaoh something, you know what I mean? We're gonna have it's gonna have to be like historically accurate as well as you know fitting to the painting. So Egypt's waves, I like that. The Anunnaki, you guys. I want to go. I'm, you know, I was watching Ancient Aliens before, which gave me the idea, and uh, there it was a whole uh, episode on on Giza, basically. So Pharaoh's portal, the pyramid seas, Moby. <laughs> I mean, there's no whale, but it could... It, you know, dude, what if we had one of those sand snakes from uh, Beetlejuice? That'd be cool. The Tomb of Giza Reclaimed. Let me ask you guys this in the comments. Do you believe that the uh, pyramids were used as tombs? Did you know that no pharaoh's body has ever been found inside of a tomb? I don't think they were used as tombs at all. You wouldn't want... Pharaohs tried to hide them themselves. They tried to hide their bodies and all of their, their wealth in a, a pit in the in the bottom of the ground it's sealed forever nobody could find it you know what i mean and um the pyramids are the, the biggest thing you could see for hundreds and hundreds of miles around why would you be like yeah right here come steal my loot come loot me i'm right here right so never thought uh, ever that they've been a, a a tomb for any pharaoh so egyptian glory scorpion king's dune i like that i like that i'm not noticing i gotta finish the side I'm going to finish the sign. Otherwise, I'll have to come back up here and do it later on my own. And that's no fun. Just like that. Very easy. All right. So, there's so many cool um, coincidences, too, with um, the pharaohs and Egypt and then the Bible and Moses. Did you know that uh, Moses is actually, um, it's like King Tut's uncle? Did you know that? Did you know? 
Did you know? And his name was called Tutmos. So Tutmos dis disappears from history at the exact moment that Moses appears in biblical history and leads the Jews out of uh, Egypt. Learn something new every day, right? Let's see. Oh, that's cool. That's it. Wrath of the Pharaoh. Who said that? Who said that? And then let me know if I am I spelling it correctly. Pin this comment, Melinda K. Wilson Quaid. That's a name for you right there. That's a name. I like that title a lot. I really like it. So what we're going to do is give you the shout out, pin your comment. Hopefully everybody goes over and follows you because everyone knows that when you're in the pin section in Josh's show, you get followed, right? And then everyone else, when it's their turn to be in the pin, the pin section, they're going to get followed. So let's see. Did you know about the curse of the Pharaoh as well? It's probably actually the wrath is better. You're right. You're right. But do you know the curse of the Pharaoh? It was uh, when people opened up the Pharaoh's tomb, you would fall ill. There would be uh, very mysterious deaths would happen in weird, weird ways. And they would say it was the, uh, the curse of the Pharaoh. So King Tut's father is still to be found, and no one has found him, and his mother. No one has found King Tut's father or mother. And they believe, at least I believe, that they were absolutely 100% aliens. If you look at Akhenaten and like a statue of his face, they, you know, if, if the artist that was chiseling the face did that face, and the pharaoh didn't look like that, that artist would be, right? So they weren't going to lie, and um, hang on, where was the, oh, there it is. Let me pin that one more time so I don't lose it. They weren't going to lie, right? So they chiseled those statues exactly how the dude looked. And he did not look human, right? He had a big, long face, big, weird body. Like, it was weird. So, absolutely, 100%. King Tut's mom and dad were aliens. He's part alien himself. He has an elongated skull, if you didn't know that. And, uh, yeah, I'm super into it. So, maybe we should do some more pyramid paintings. I don't know. Very cool. Let's see over here. Number 908, I think, right? 908. What do we call this one again? Wrath of the Pharaoh. How do you spell Pharaoh? P-H-A-R-A-O-H. Only got eight seconds left. Crap. Okay, if I said anything else in between writing it, I was going to forget how to spell it. So thank you to Melinda K. Wilson Quaid. Very much appreciate you. I'm going to give you a follow real quick while you're pinned up there. Follow back. You already follow me. You're so sweet. So uh, remember, guys, we're giving away a free painting. <laughs> Whoa. No, we're not. What are you thinking, John? Jeez, don't say those words. We're giving away a free hat. Not a free painting. Whoo! Goodness gracious. We're giving away a free hat. If you go over to my Facebook page and just do a couple little directions, right? You go over to the Facebook page and you find the very first thing on the Facebook page is the giveaway post, right? It's the giveaway announcement thing. So you're going to go and share that to your page or an art page, or uh, your favorite group, or whatever. Just share it. And then once you've shared it, you're going to screenshot the share as proof that you had shared it. And then come back over to my Facebook page and drop that comment in the comment section. And once you've done that, then I'll comment on your post and say you're entered. All right? And then once you're entered, you're entered for free. So we're going to be doing a, a, a little thing out of the hat on Friday night. So hopefully you're here on Friday at 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And you have the chance to win some free merch. Maybe we'll do two giveaways. Why not? Do two, right? Everyone, I mean, it's hard to get one, right? So maybe we do two. I'm going to have backpacks. I'm going to have hats. I'm going to have all sorts of stuff. It's a little shabby over here if I'm keeping this one for myself since no one's going to get it. 
since I've taken out the store and keep it for myself. Ooh, don't do that. <laughs> Get paint on my lips. Um, what was I saying? I have no idea. No idea what I was talking about. There we go. That side looks good. This side's always the side I can see on camera, so that's the side that always looks good. Take this guy up here. Perfection. So I can't wait to go post this somewhere. Maybe in like the weird art group that I'm at, uh, that I'm in on Facebook. Post it in the weird art group and see what they have to say about this sucker. Because it's kind of weird. It's a little weird. It's definitely not normal. So it's a little weird if you ask me. Very cool though. So dope. I love it. Love it. Okay, let's stop playing with it. All right, let's come over here. Wash these brushes off. Thank you for the title, Melinda. You're awesome. Thank you for tuning in and watching, being a fan and a follower. I love you. Every single one of you guys over here on TikTok and that follow me on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, you guys are amazing. All right, every single one of you is. There's 100, no, there's 375,000 followers right here on TikTok. Last time I checked, 375. What? <laughs> and I love every single one of you. I wish I could meet every single one of you. I wish I could give you a hug. I wish I could know your name. I wish we could all be friends. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of brain power left in here. And so uh, I don't get to a lot. And I don't remember a lot of stuff. So. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I've got tons of shirts. I've got tons of hats, all sorts of stuff in different color patterns and everything while we make a mess with Josh, right? Got to make a mess. Show you how to make it look cool. So get over there to the store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And have yourself a good old night. So until I see you guys again next time, take care.